two reasons I made this video, alright? One is because a little voice told me to go out and get those 14 views, so I had to. But the main reason is the Smelter Demon boss fight in Iron Key. To preface this whole shit, I'd like to inform you of an interesting fact. In every one of these Souls games I've played, I've always reached the point where I quit the game. In Bloodborne, I actually quit for a combination of reasons. A, I wasn't enjoying it very much. The world was cool, but getting killed repeatedly and the combat in general annoyed me at the time. I made the decision to quit when I found out about the Raven questline and accidentally killed her during the fight. I literally unplugged my system to avoid the autosave, but it didn't matter. Of course, I ended up feeling incomplete, as I always do. Look at the history of grinding on this channel. So eventually I returned and succeeded. Now, to be fair, replaying any of these games, I always enjoy more than my initial experience, and there's gotta be something to that. Getting an understanding of the world, and foresight on which enemies to respect, which ones to ignore, which ones to lure away, it's kinda satisfying. This actually takes me to why I quit Dark Souls. I was pretty close to the Undead Paris bonfire where you meet sexy blacksmith Andre, and I encountered an elite hollow soldier. He was tall with his back to me, and the only other tall enemies I'd seen up to that point were the Black Knights, who would totally fuck my shit up. So I didn't provoke him, and tried to continue on, but somehow ended up cornered between two of them, or like three of them in a hallway, and dying to this not even strong enemy because I overestimated and ran away from him and got outnumbered by him. Then I died again, lost my bloodstain, and rage quit, eventually restarting with a new character a couple of days later. Anyway, this brings me to fucking Iron Key. This fucking area. It's, it's, it's not fun. These fucking samurai statues can see you from 13 kilometers away and shoot homing arrows at the speed of sound until you're close enough for them to night at the Roxbury Hotel you off a fucking bridge into lava. So you can't run past them. You have to clear them out every time you pass through this stupid area. And you have to clear all of them because they have x-ray vision and ass seen on TV hearing aids to hear you mutter shit at your screen when you're pissed so they can all welcome home dad you the second you fucking walk in. Now there is a shortcut. If you don't have anything to lose and are a decent platformer, despite the wonky control sometimes, you can leap a gap and then you only have to fight like four of them, assuming you can even do so quick enough that the rest don't have time to interrupt you while sneaking past the last guy directly into the fucking boss fight. It took me enough attempts to do this, killing everybody along the way, that they actually stopped respawning. Now I'm not complaining about the boss, it's a fun one, like most in the series, and it gives you some sexy underboob armor, which I'm a fan of. But the path to fighting it made me quit the game. And then you guys did come back a few days later with a new character. Uh, wait, I lied. Uh, I actually died in that one magic place where Forlorn kept spawning and killing me after I soul vesseled my way to a strength build and then used a sight like an idiot. One of my biggest problems with this series, aside from long journeys to boss rooms, secret shit I didn't know about. Who the fuck is supposed to find these fake walls? These illusory walls? Not me. I always use spells and make wizards starting from level 1 as deprived, but I didn't know where the fucking catalyst was in the Forest of Lost Giants. I had to look that shit up and find it after I already beat the boss. Do you remember the Great Hollow in Dark Souls 1? How are you supposed to find that shit? What's even more annoying are things that make me realize I should have had a V8. That's right. Things I probably could have found myself if I looked hard enough. Like the giant in the chasm. I might have noticed a ledge there using my torch if I didn't need my shield for the tough-ass enemies and fucking poison statues and multiple invading NPCs. It's like, if you're gonna have secrets in a game, the difficulty needs to match. I'm not willing to risk falling into a hole I think might be worthwhile because if there's nothing there, my character goes back to looking like a gross zombie. There's no balance here. I can't treasure hunt and explore when enemies sneak up out of nowhere and if I die I have to redo the whole area. It's not worth it. Alright, was that a review? What do reviews need? A judgment, right? I like Dark Souls too. It's fine. The fighting is fun, levels are interesting, the first time. Some hitboxes seem broken when I swear I dodged in time. Uh, ledges and dark areas you can only notice by using a torch that some guy in the game literally tells you not to fucking light are stupid. Um, how do you fix this game balance? Don't make a game so tense and difficult throughout, yet also leave so much content unavailable to a player who was too cautious to find things found by counterintuitive means. I was scared to beat an area by diving into a foggy hole, which was the only apparent exit, so I looked it up just to see that yes, I did need to beat the area by falling into the fucking hole, which was certain death anywhere else in the game. Fuck Dark Souls. It's fun though, I'll give it a 6. Why? Uh, character details? Lots of undead boobs and butts, which is totally necessary, and I dig it.